Hey there, John from FatSexBlog.com. Today, I'm going to step you through my 13 must-use WordPress plugins. Each of them either drive traffic, generate revenue, and or save time. Before we jump into that list, I'd just like to let you know this presentation is brought to you by Ezoic. Ezoic is a high-tech platform. It offers a lot of ads, but they're more than just an ad network. They increase ad revenue via split testing ads all over your site, different types, different sizes, different colors, and ultimately for every URL will generate the optimal or maximum revenue for that URL. You can also create sticky ads for the sidebar and, sidebar and the bottom of the content, and those, those are excellent earners. So if you want some sticky ads, definitely check out Ezoic. The first plugin, and this is probably my all-time favorite plugin because I use display ads on my niche sites, is Ad Inserter Plugin. I have tried many, many, many display ad plugins for managing ads across sites, and Ad Inserter is the one I've been using for years, and it's the one I use now on every site. So essentially what it does is it manages your display ad placements across your entire site. And this way, you do, anytime you want to make a change in an ad, if you put individual ad code in every single post, you'd have to go through all those posts and do it. It'd be, it'd be a horrendous, horrendous waste of time. This way, you can put your ad in one specific lo location, like below the title or after the sixth paragraph, and it will do that site-wide. And the ad, ad inserter gives you the option to not have it display on particular URLs or not in particular categories or only on particular categories and so on and so forth. So it's it's very, very powerful. It's very fast to use. There is a very good free version. In fact, the free version is probably sufficient for most websites. Uh, however, the premium version is not terribly expensive. It just offers uh, a few more bells and whistles. Here's a quick look at the back end of the Add Inserter plugin. You have up to 96 placeholders. I believe that's for the premium version. You have 16 with the free version and you can toggle across these very very quickly which i like now in each of these placeholders you would put your ad code but you could also put affiliate banners you could put anything you want you could put a little note to readers whatever anything can go in these which is which is really really convenient including short codes now you could control what type of pages that these ad, a particular ad would show up on you can also dictate of course here uh, after before all sorts of features paragraphs images before post would be above the title, before content would be below the title, and a lot of other options. So if we're gonna do after paragraph, which you can do here, this is a very nice feature. You can specify a paragraph with the P, but if you prefer to show it after the six heading, heading two, a heading two tag, then you could input that here, and what it will do is this particular placeholder will display directly after your six heading two tag, which can be really nice because ads can perform quite well after large headings. Lots of other controls. I'm not going to go through them all. These are the main ones I use. I keep it fairly simple, but there are a lot of, you can even do a repeating. So have something show up after uh, every 10th paragraph or every 10th image and that sort of thing. So lots of lots of control here for displaying your ads. It's very, very quick. This, I have tried many ad plugins and this is by far my favorite. It's the one I use exclusively on all my sites. Plugin number two is Elementor Pro. Now, for anyone who has read Fat Sex Vlog for a little while, you're going to be scratching your head because I have been very clear I'm not big on using page builders on my sites. And page builders basically give you options to create posts to be a lot more stylized, look a lot better. I find they're very time consuming. I find, especially if you use different columns, they're going to make a mess of your display ads, which is the principal reason I don't like using them. And it's still true, I don't like using them for just my regular blog posts across my sites, which is basically 99% of the content I produce, so I don't use it on those. However, what I recently discovered with Elementor Pro, which you do have to pay for if you want this feature, is it can create custom archive pages. Now, for years I have been creating custom archive pages for the site because I like to rank them, but I have had to put them on a, a different URL than the archive URL. And by archive URL, I mean when you create like a tag or a category, it'll have slash tag, slash your tag name sort of thing. And what I would normally do is I would either uh, canonical that to the main page that I'm using as a custom archive page and then design it from there, or I would just do a, a full redirect. Now, with Elementor Pro, you can actually customize the entire archive page, including paginated uh, post grids, 
and bolt it to the actual archive URL. And for me, that's very, very handy. I don't think everybody who's going to be publishing new sites are gonna, gonna wanna do this and put all the time into your archive pages. But I find archive pages can be very powerful. I like to customize them. I don't customize all of them, but I customize ones where I'm going after a, a fairly significant keyword and I want the best opportunity to rank, so I add quite a bit of good content to that. So for that, I use Elementor Pro, I really like it. I've also, because now that I've paid for Elementor Pro, I'm switching all my lead pages over to Elementor Pro landing pages, so I do use some form of page builder for landing pages, which would be something where I'm trying to do a, a lead gen uh, scenario or opt-in or something like that, I'm gonna use landing pages for that. For my regular posts that I use, which is 99% of the content I put out, I don't use page builders at all, but for these very specific purposes, Elementor Pro is excellent, and it's uh, it, the the archive thing is, is great. And I just discovered it. I'm I'm sure it's been around for a long time, and I just didn't even notice it. So very happy about that. Number three is Opt-in Monster. Now, if you build an email list, and I don't recommend every niche build an email list. I am in niches where I have built up lists, and they are worthless. But it it's usually worth trying to see if you can make it work. At niches where you're serving a business community, it's a no-brainer like Fatstacks blog or if you're serving some sort of specific business industry, building a list is, is absolutely important. It's a big part of it. But if you're going to try to build a list, Optin Monster is the best. Basically, it provides forms for your site and it provides pretty much every type of form imaginable. You can see them on Fatstacks. I use it on Fatstacks. You've got a welcome mat, exit pop, regular pop-up, ribbons, sidebar, in content, bottom, anywhere and every type you can imagine. You can fully customize the design or just use one of the many template designs which I typically do provided by Optin Monster so it's fairly quick to deploy. What I like about this, because I've used a number of these types of plugins, is this one works. It actually works. Others have been glitchy or they stop working and you don't realize it until you know a week later your, your subscriber rate's gone down and you're thinking, well, what's going on? Oh, well, it stopped working. There's a problem. There's a glitch. And it's really annoying because I got to waste time doing it. I've never had to deal with a problem with Optin Monster. I set them up, I turn them on, and they work and they've never stopped working. Now, for that convenience and a working plugin, you pay. This is not a cheap plugin. This is something that's going to cost. So if you're going to do use opt-in monster make sure that you're fairly committed to building up your list and monetizing it because this will set you back a few bucks every month just a tip though i do if you get a lot of traffic uh, it could be worth using this just to have the exit pop as a great great way to send visitors to another uh, article uh, on your site maybe something that earns really well i actually do do this on on one of my niche sites i don't build the email list anymore with that but on a specific category where, where there's tight alignment and I send them to a, an affiliate uh, offer page, it actually earns quite well, more than makes up the cost of using Optin Monster on that additional site. Number four is Grow by Media Vine. It's formerly Social Pug, which is when I started using it. There are both free and paid versions. And this plugin basically will display share buttons on your site and Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, etc. I use it across all my sites. At the end of the day, there are a lot of free social sharing button plugins out there and they're all, I don't want to say they're all very good, but most of them are quite good, especially if they're fairly popular. So I can't really say like this is the one you have to use and this is why. It, for me, it works. It's it's simple. Uh, they're, the free version's good. I think I, I have a paid version for one site. It does everything I need it to do. It's very simple to, to, to actually just set it up and I can use short codes to display the buttons or I can just do one of the automatic display options. Uh, it just works. Uh, give it a shot if you're looking for one of these. If you're happy with the one you have, I'm sure it's good enough. Number five, AMZ Image. I love this plugin. Okay, basically what it does is it does one thing only and it does it very, very well, is it inserts Amazon product images into your content via the Amazon appy. You are not permitted to download an image from Amazon and then upload it into your site to show a product. You need to use the appy. Now there are plenty of Amazon plugins out there that connect with the Amazon appy so that you can embed images and pricing and pr provide a whole bunch of different little nuggets of information through the appy from Amazon to plug into your site. 
I typically only really want the images from Amazon. That's it. So this works really well. It's very simple. I don't have to stylize or design anything. I don't have to worry about ads sort of injecting themselves into some sort of table or, or columns or that sort of thing. All I need to do is insert the image and you can insert a fairly large image from Amazon using this plugin, which is what I really like. You can also add captions to those images. So I like to add captions like uh, click the image above to learn more or for pricing or something like that. Get a higher click through rate on these images that I embed into my content. But a lot of times I, I use this not because I think I'm going to make any money with the affiliate link and the affiliate link is automatically linked from the image to Amazon, but I use it because I just want the, the product image in the content because it enhances the content. I don't expect that someone's going to click and buy. It may be just more of a purely informational article where people who come aren't really interested in buying it, but I use the image as an example. So in fact, a lot of, a lot of times that is the reason I'm embedding the image and not necessarily try to get clicks and earn commissions. Besides Amazon pays peanuts now, so I'm not even going to, I'm not even really sure I'm going to really create a lot of content gunning for Amazon clicks and commissions because the commissions are really, really low. But I will still promote Amazon because at the end of the day, the number of product images there and how easy it is to embed into the site just makes it worth doing. Number six, Mammoth Doc X Converter. This is a free plugin. I've been using this for years. Here's, here's what it does. Basically, you get a DocX from your writer and you got to get it into the WordPress visual editor. If you copy and paste from the DocX into your visual editor, your code is going to be a mess. You're going to have a whole bunch of div tags you're going to have to strip out and a bunch of other nonsense. You don't want that in your website code. What DocX does is it strips all that stuff out and it retains the formatting that your writer may have put into the docx which is a huge huge time saver as well so it, it does two things it does them really really well it's great if you have other people working on your site and they're importing your your articles that are coming to you in the docx format it just inserts uh, instantly and you you keep all your h2 tags or h3 tags bold etc so i it's it's huge for me i like it i put it on every site one thing though you need to know is if you have images in the docx document and you then import that document those images are all going to have the same file name they're going to be i can't remember what it is i think it's like wp image and then the next one in the article would be slash two or something like that the problem with that is, is if you import 50 articles into your website, all of your images are going to have the same image file names. And what's going to happen is when people visit your site, you're, not, they're, you're going to see different images, not the right images showing up for your post because they're all the same file names. That's not good. You need to actually not import the images via this, or if you do, you need to somehow change that image file name so that it's unique on your site. Otherwise, the right images are not going to show. And I've learned this the hard way. Number seven is the key Q2 W3 fixed widget, a free plugin I've been using for years. If you want to make something sticky or floating in the sidebar, this is the widget to do it. It's very simple. Again, another one of those plugins that does one thing and it does it really, really well. It just works and it's free. Note, if you use AdSense ads, do not make your sidebar ad sticky with this. AdSense does not permit that. If you want a sticky ad and you do because they pay very, very well, you need to use an ad network that has arrangements with the Google ads and all the other ad networks to make, to permit a sticky ad in the sidebar. I recommend Ezoic for that. They can do that for you. You can actually use this fixed widget with this Ezoic ad tag in there and it'll be sticky and you'll make more money from your sidebar. Number eight is the short pixel image optimizer. I use a lot of images and I upload them. And while I do still optimize them myself with uh, various uh, online optimizers and so do my VAs, it's nice to have the short pixel image optimizer there just for in, in case it doesn't happen or further optimization. And by optimization, I mean it just reduces the file size of the images. If you download a, an image, for instance, from a free stock site or even Shutterstock, that file size is enormous. It's like 600 KB, or maybe up to 1,000. If, if the image is large, like 3,000 pixels wide, A, you'll want to resize that down, but also B, 
uh, that that file size is huge, and if you, you they just take a long time to load. So what what Short Pixel Image Optimizer does, it'll automatically reduce the file size of images you upload, and so they will load faster. Has a lot of other bells and whistles that you can go through when setting it up. One thing I really like is that it will convert your images if you want to WebP format, and I do do that across all my sites. And the reason for that is WebP images load even faster, and I like that. My ninth plugin, and these are in no particular order. I like them all, so I, I couldn't really be forced to pick one. They all do something different. Is the Table of Contents Plus plugin? All right, this is free, and basically you just put a short code into a post, and it will automatically create a table of contents for that article. Now, what it does is it hyperlinks to your different headings, so H2 headings, H3, and so forth. And you can have it automatically display site-wide by one of the particular settings, like at the top or at the bottom of your content. I prefer to use the short code, the TOC, uh, with the square brackets around it. And the reason for that is, is I don't always want it just at the top. I sometimes maybe want it after the introduction and that sort of thing. So, uh, but this one just plain old works. I like I like adding table of contents. I like sites that use table of contents, and I typically will deploy on my sites what I like to see when I visit a site. It's just how I am, and so I use this. Uh, you don't, you're not going to use it on really short content. I tend to publish fairly long content with a lot of headings, so it works and it makes sense. Number ten is thirsty affiliates. Now this isn't going to work on every site. Like for instance, if you have a, a niche site and you, you you promote, let's say, all different types of uh, products across multiple merchants. Let's say different, you know, you have 200 different products on Amazon and then a bunch on Walmart and then Zazzle or whatever, right? Just all products from all over the place, eBay. Thirsty Affiliates isn't really a solution. You're not going to take the time to create a, a custom cloaked affiliate track um, link for every individual product that you would do like that. But for sites where you promote a handful of products and you do so over and over across your different posts and your emails and all that, a, a site like Fatstacks, for instance, I tend to tend to link to the, when there's an affiliate link, it's the same 10, 15, 20 products. And so I create a link with Thirsty Affiliates and I use that link in emails and in blog posts and elsewhere. Uh, primarily because if the affiliate code ever changes from a particular merchant, instead of having to go through the entire site swapping out that code, I can just go into the Thirsty Affiliates dashboard and swap out the code there. I just got to do it once, and I know that, that that affiliate link will be correct for all instances of that particular product promotion within the site. Okay, And that's why it doesn't really make sense if you promote hundreds or thousands of different products for a particular, because it's just, it's probably a one-off, and, and you know, if the code changes, I don't know. I mean, it might make sense for you. It just doesn't for me, and I don't do it. But I, for sites like Fatsacks or any B2B uh, site where the audience is generally a business audience and I promote a small batch of products over and over, then I use Thirsty Affiliates. Number 11 is Manage WP. This is a fairly new addition to my favorite fleet of plugins, and that is because I'm fairly lazy when it comes to updating plugins and themes and WordPress version across all my sites. I tend to let it go until there's a problem, and that's not a very good way to operate. What Manage WP does for free is it will automatically update all of those things at a schedule that I've set. I typically schedule it for once a week, and I know that everything's updated. And here's the thing, it actually works. It works flawlessly. I've never had a problem with it. Every time I come in on Monday, everything's updated, and I don't have to worry about it. So this is a huge time saver. I don't have to pay anyone to update it. I don't have to pay an expensive service, 60, 70, 80 bucks a month to update it. I can just do it. Now, that said, while it's worked flawlessly for me and many, many other folks, I suspect problems could arise. Perhaps you update a plugin that that shouldn't be, or there's a problem with it, and stuff goes awry on your site, and you get big problems. In that case, you you really want, and for many other reasons, you want your site to be backed up regularly. Now, my hosting company backs up my site daily, so I don't pay for the the add-on cost feature of daily updates with Manage WP, but it is available at a I think it's a dollar per month per site, which is which is fairly cheap, and it will it will update your site and back it up every day, and I I rely on my hosting uh, with Kinsta to do that. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a second 
uh, backup system in place and, and maybe I'll get around to that. But anyways, in terms of automatically updating your plugins and your themes in the WordPress version, this is great. Number 12, Yoast SEO. No doubt you've heard of it. I, well, I suspect it's the most popular SEO plugin out there used by millions and millions and millions of websites, including mine. Now, it Basically, my, I mean, it, what it does is it will allow you to customize your SEO title and meta description on a page by page or post by post basis, which is all well and good. Typically, I don't even think I really need that just because my SEO titles are generally the same as the actual blog post titles. So, uh, probably uh, a little bit redundant there. However, uh, Yoast SEO, and I've lately I've been I've been trying to learn a lot about schema markup and improve that across my sites and trying different schema markup for different articles and so on and so forth. More on that down the road. However, what I have learned is that Yoast SEO plugin includes schema markup for your site, for the organization, the site-wide information for for Google for proper schema markup, but also for individual articles. Okay, and this is really big because I was using another schema plugin and it was okay, but it wasn't necessary. Yoast does a really good job. Now, Yoast schema markup is limited. It's not going to include a recipe schema markup, for instance, or a product review schema markup. Okay, we're going to get down to very specific types of schema for particular types of articles. You're going to need either to check out a schema markup code generator online, which there are many and they work, and I, that's what I use, or you're going to have to get a more dedicated schema markup plugin. That's not the route I like. I tried two, in fact, I even paid for them. And I just found they made a mess of things, and so I prefer the generators myself. But if it if the plugins work for you, by all means, all all that really matters is that you get your proper schema markup on your site for whatever types of content that you're displaying on a particular page. All right, so I really like that about Yoast because it actually works. I tested it in Search Console. I test my pages for schema markup, and with that. It works flawlessly, it does it properly, so I'm very happy about that. The other thing that Yoast does that I really like is you can uh, you can index or not index particular archive pages and other pages like author pages and so forth on your site yeah, with Google. And for me, that's really, really big because I tend to like to archive, um, index both tag and category pages uh, in my site, but there'll be maybe other taxonomies that I've set up that I don't want to index. So basically Yoast gives you a lot of control over indexing different taxonomies. It depends how many you use across your site to make sure that you're providing or telling Google to index certain content that's important and keeping others out that may may result because of thin content and so forth. So I like I like that control and for me that's huge and that's why I use Yoast. It is free, but there is a paid upgrade version with more bells and whistles. The last plugin, my number 13, is the Yoast Video SEO plugin. I just got this. I am using it, and it, again, pertains to uh, schema markup, and it adds video schema markup to embedded videos in your site. So, for instance, with Fat Stacks, I publish videos on YouTube. I have a channel there. And then I also will embed those YouTube videos in the, the relevant post. Usually just one post that's relevant. Like for instance, I will put this video on the blog post that lists out my 13 WordPress plugins that I use. Okay, what Yoast SEO will do is it will provide the video schema markup for that embedded YouTube video. And essentially it gives that video a chance to rank in Google search or particularly the video tabs uh, instead of linking to the YouTube version, the listing in the Google search or video tab will link to that site's blog website. Now, I'm all about getting views and subscribers and growing a YouTube channel and all that. That's great. That's all well and good. But I'd much rather have people visit Fat Sex Blog website, and it's the same with all my niche sites. I'd much rather drive the traffic to the niche sites rather than the YouTube channel because... I earn a lot more money per thousand visitors off the website than I do on a YouTube channel. Now, I say that that's my strategy. My strategy is not about focusing my entire business solely on building a YouTube channel. That is a business model, and it can be very, very good if you're very good at build, making videos and you're entertaining and you don't only really care about your blog. So it really depends what your focus is. If you really are keen about growing a huge YouTube channel, you may not want to use this plugin because you'd rather 
visitors, people watch your videos on YouTube and subscribe and build up the channel that way. So it really depends what your focus is. For me, I'd rather get visitors to my sites rather than to YouTube channel, but that's just me. So, you know, ask yourself what it is your focus is before you just run out and go ahead and get the Yoast Video SEO plugin. Because it is a paid plugin, it's, I, I don't believe there's a free version of it. That's a wrap on my must use 13 WordPress plugins. I use these across pretty much every website for the most part. And uh, I'm glad, you know, most offer pretty decent free versions, but in a couple instances you do need to pay. Anyways, that's what I use. And each plugin specifically either generates revenue, drives traffic, or saves me time. And the really good ones will do two or three of those. Thanks for watching.